This Sunday, making the case. This is not a partisan moment. This must be an American moment. Joe Biden frames his campaign against President Trump. Character is on the ballot. Compassion is on the ballot. Decency, science, democracy, they're all on the ballot. With a little help from his friends and his running mate. The constant chaos leaves us adrift. The incompetence makes us feel afraid. Now it's President Trump's turn. Joe Biden is a puppet of the radical left movement. As he signals his campaign strategy. I'm the only thing standing between the American dream and total anarchy, madness, and chaos. My guests this morning, Trump campaign senior advisor Jason Miller and former Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg of Indiana. Plus, as President Trump continues his baseless attacks on mail-in voting. This is just a way they're trying to steal the election. House Democrats vote to block changes that slowed some postal service. Don't pay any attention to what the president is saying, because it is all designed to suppress the vote. And a bipartisan Senate panel details the extensive ties between Russia and the 2016 Trump campaign. Unprecedented amount of Russian intervention and a myriad of contacts. I'll talk to the top Democrat on the Senate Intel Committee, Mark Warner. Joining me for insight and analysis are NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker, Gerald Seib of the Wall Street Journal, and former Republican governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker. Welcome to Sunday. It's Meet the Press. From NBC News in Washington, the longest running show in television history, this is Meet the Press with Chuck Todd. The accomplishments that we've had over the last four years with President Trump and what the president's second term vision is going to look like. And this is a big difference, Chuck, between President Trump and his convention this week and the Democrats last week. Last week, it was a massive grievance fest. We didn't hear about the vision for the future, how their policies would help people. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because they didn't want to talk about the four trillion in tax hikes, a Green New Deal at a time when we can't afford to stop our economy and our economic growth. They want to throw it in reverse and go back to the policies of the past. That's wrong, but you're going to see a great uplifting message from the president and from our allies. And Chuck, when I tell you some of these stories that you hear, there are going to be some breakout stars, Mm -hmm. some people that you would not expect to be supporters of the president, and it's going to tell a very beautiful story. Well, when you hear the unexpected about the president, we're hearing the unexpected today about the president with somebody with the last name of Trump. Uh, I want to play one of these uh, Uh, quotes from the president's sister and ask you about it on the other side. This is from the president's sister, recorded by his niece, Mary Trump. Um, Mary Ann Trump, his older sister, did not know she was being recorded, but it was a legally made recording uh, uh, according to New York state law. Here's what she said. Damn tweet and the lie. Oh my God, I'm talking too freely, but you know... It, it, the change of stories, the lack of preparation, the lying, the holy You just made a case here that, you, you know, that we're going to hear from unusual people that you wouldn't normally hear from perhaps at a Republican convention. Um, these are the people that know the president best. They have the last name of Trump. Are you concerned that this is going to have an impact on those swing voters who are like, it's confirmation that, yeah, boy, even his own relatives think he lies too much? No, Chuck, sibling rivalries are nothing new in the world. It's been going on since the beginning of time. In fact, we heard some pretty pointed commentary from Malik Obama about former President Barack Obama. And so this is something, unfortunately, when you get to the White House, you have family members who uh, sometimes decide to voice their sibling uh, rivalries or or frustrations. Nothing new, uh, but it's going into next week. It's not something that's going to be an issue. Yeah, but Marianne Trump is no ordinary Trump. She's a She's basically a retired federal judge, somebody who's who's sort of uh, been Senate confirmed. She she comes with credibility. Well, Chuck, I can tell you in my conversations with the president over the years, I've only heard him say positive things about his sister, uh, someone who's a very accomplished judge. And I think he's very proud of everything that she has accomplished. But I do want to make one other point here, Chuck. Uh, this past week, the president and Marianne Trump lost their brother, Robert Trump. 
and he was just laid to rest and had their services for him at the White House on Friday. And I really do think that it's shameful that the Washington Post came and ran this story yesterday, uh, literally the day after the funeral services for Robert Trump, just an attempt to try to tear down the president. To do that right after they laid their brother to rest, I think is shameful. My word, if you entrust me with the presidency, I will draw on the best of us, not the worst. I'll be an ally of the light, not the darkness. It's time for us, for we the people, to come together. If you think things cannot possibly get worse, trust me, they can and they will if we don't make a change in this election. If we have any hope of ending this chaos, we have got to vote for Joe Biden like our lives depend on it. This election is the most important in the modern history of this country. And we need Joe Biden as our next president. Let me tell you about my friend, Joe Biden. When he talks with someone who's lost her job, Joe remembers the night his father sat him down to say that he'd lost his. When Joe listens to a parent who's trying to hold it all together right now, he does it as a single dad who took the train back to Wilmington each and every night so he could tuck his kids into bed. This is the leader who wrote the Violence Against Women Act and enacted the assault weapons ban, who as vice president implemented the Recovery Act, which brought our country back from the Great Recessions. He championed the Affordable Care Act, protecting millions of Americans with pre-existing conditions who spent decades promoting American values and interests around the world. Joe, he believes we stand with our allies and stand up to our adversaries. We need a leader who will step in on day one and do his job to care. Now more than ever, we need a president who will unite this country. We will need a president who sees unifying people as a requirement of the job. We need a leader as good as our people, a leader who appeals to the best within us, not the worst. I'm sure there are Republicans and independents who couldn't imagine crossing over to support a Democrat. They fear Joe may turn sharp left and leave them behind. I don't believe that. While Joe and I disagree on the best path to get universal coverage, he has a plan that will greatly expand health care and cut the cost of prescription drugs. Remember back in 2016 when Trump asked, what do you have to lose? Well, now we know our health care, our jobs, our loved ones, our leadership in the world and even our post office. We've literally had to reinvent our business uh, several times since the beginning of the year. Just uh, just to stay afloat. My biggest concern is that if uh, these trends continue with this type of leadership, uh, I, w I will be the last generation farming this farm. Let me tell you, Donald Trump has no clue how to run a business, let alone an economy. Joe Biden, on the other hand, has a plan that will strengthen our economy for working people and small business owners. He's given us smart, detailed plans to invest in areas vital to our future. Joe Biden wants to build an economy far better suited to our changing world. Better for young people, better for families working and raising their kids, better for people who lost jobs and need new ones, better for farmers tired of being collateral damage in trade wars, better for workers caring for the sick, elderly, and people with disabilities. Let's vote for the jobs that Joe's plan will create. Clean energy jobs to fight climate change, caregiving jobs with living wages, Vote for emergency relief that lifts small businesses and saves hardworking people from foreclosures and evictions. It's time to recognize that childcare is part of the basic infrastructure of this nation. It's infrastructure for families. So many classrooms are quiet right now. The playgrounds are still, but if you listen closely, you can hear the sparks of change in the air. Across this country, educators, parents, first responders, Americans of all walks of life are putting their shoulders back, fighting for each other. We haven't given up. 
We just need leadership worthy of our nation, worthy of you. Black, Latino, and indigenous people are suffering and dying disproportionately. And this is not a coincidence. It is the effect of structural racism, of inequities in education and technology, healthcare and housing, job security and transportation. The injustice in reproductive and maternal health care, in the excessive use of force by police. They see people calling the police on folks minding their own business just because of the color of their skin. They see an entitlement that says only certain people belong here. How you're prioritizing the many things you have to do to, as we try to tackle in a way that we haven't before systemic racism in the city. It really is about economic empowerment. And let's be clear, there is no vaccine for racism. We've got to do the work for George Floyd, for Breonna Taylor, for the lives of too many others to name. Donald Trump inherited a growing economy and a more peaceful world. And like everything else he inherited, He bankrupted it. Millions out of work, millions more trapped in cycles of poverty, millions on the brink of losing their homes, millions of restaurants and stores hanging by a thread. This crisis is bad, and it didn't have to be this way. Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Trump golfs. I never expected that my successor would embrace my vision or continue my policies. I did hope, for the sake of our country, that Donald Trump might show some interest in taking the job seriously, that he might come to feel the weight of the office and discover some reverence for the democracy that had been placed in his care. But he never did. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work, no interest in finding common ground, no interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends. No interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. When this president goes overseas, it isn't a goodwill mission, it's a blooper reel. He breaks up with our allies and writes love letters to dictators. America deserves a president who is looked up to, not laughed at. With Joe Biden in the White House, you will never doubt that he will stand with our friends and stand up to our adversaries, never the other way around. He will trust our diplomats and our intelligence community, not the flattery of dictators and despots. Would you rehire or work for someone who ran your business into the ground and who always does what's best for him or her, even when it hurts the company, and whose reckless decisions put you in danger, and who spends more time tweeting than working? If the answer is no, why the hell would we ever rehire Donald Trump for another four years? We need the world to feel better. I'm just a regular kid, and in a short amount of time, Joe Biden made me more confident about something that's bothered me my whole life. Joe Biden cared. Imagine what he could do for all of us. Kids like me are counting on you to elect someone we can all look up to. I've been guided by the words I spoke from the first time I stood in a courtroom. Kamala Harris for the people. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. This is a life-changing election. This will determine what America is going to look like for a long, long time. My economic plan is all about jobs, dignity, respect and community. Together we can and will rebuild our economy. And when we do, we'll not only build back, we'll build back better. With modern roads, bridges, highways, broadband, ports and airports as a new foundation for economic growth, with pipes that transport clean water to every community, with five million new manufacturing and technology jobs so the future is made in America. With a healthcare system that lowers premiums, deductibles, drug prices, by building on the Affordable Care Act, he's trying to rip away. 
with an education system that trains our people for the best jobs of the 21st century. There's not a single thing American workers can't do. So it's with great honor and humility, I accept this nomination for President of the United States of America.